the moment, many are thinking about their plans for the next 12 months. And for some of these people, that involves taking a look at their money and making adjustments so they can hit some of their goals or just feel more financially confident. Likewise, this might be the year that you decide to build an emergency fund to pay off credit card debt or maybe save a down payment fund. But regardless of what you're aiming for, here are 23 actionable steps that you can do over the next 12 months to take your money to the next level. So the first thing you can do is downgrade so that you can upgrade. And I use that term upgrade very loosely, so I'm not referring to it in the sense of trying to keep up with others. However, if your plan is to buy a house in the near future and you're struggling to save a down payment or closing costs, lowering your housing expense might help you save faster. Now, obviously this is not an option for everyone, but I do recommend seriously considering if it is an option for you, because if you can rent a place that's cheaper or smaller, maybe a room or moving back in with your parents, you might be able to reduce your housing expense by half, which can be a huge boost to your down payment fund. Also, you need to stop listening to naysayers. And if you don't have any of these people around you, consider yourself fortunate. These types of people know how to rain on another person's parade. And if they get in your head, you might start to believe that you can't do better financially. Some people will project their own financial insecurities onto you. So it's so important that you learn how to recognize this and ignore it. So if you wanna invest, start a business, or go back to school, don't listen to people who tell you it's a bad idea because all they're trying to do is keep you stuck in the same place. Also, remove certain phrases from your vocabulary. I will admit, I am a glass half empty type of person. I have a tendency to focus on worst case scenarios and I don't always look on the bright side, but I have gotten better. And one thing that helps is removing certain phrases from my vocabulary, such as I can't, or I should, or I will never. These types of words or phrases can disempower us, and if we say them enough, we start to believe them. So when it comes to finances, find replacements for those words or phrases. So instead of saying, I will never pay off my credit card debt, what you can say instead is, let me come up with a plan that will help me pay off these balances. It also helps to stop living for the moment. Now this should not be confused with living in the moment, which is actually good because that involves being more present and focused, which can help you if you're dealing with anxiety. Living for the moment is completely different because this involves focusing on the present without any regard to consequences. So then you're more likely to make impulse purchases, which can have a negative impact on your life. And while we're on this subject, also make it a point to delay gratification, which involves waiting for what you want and resisting instant pleasure. And unfortunately, this does not come natural for everyone, but there are a few things you can do. You can agree to wait at least 24 hours before making an impulse purchase, and it also helps to remind yourself of why you're giving up certain things. This can help you decide whether an immediate reward is worth delaying a goal. Also, stop thinking you need a lot of money to invest. Yes, investing does take money, and depending on the type of investment, you might need $500 to $1,000 to start. But that isn't always the case, and there are low-cost index funds and ETFs that allow you to start with very little money. So if you've been waiting to increase your income before you start investing, make this year the year that you take the first step. One option I recommend for beginners is Acorns because you can set up recurring contributions and you can make one-time contributions into your account at any time starting at $5. And if you turn on the Roundups feature and link a debit or credit card, Acorns will round up your purchases to the nearest dollar and invest the difference. I'll include a link below that you can check out. And as a bonus, if you use my referral link, Acorns will give you $10 to start. Another thing you can do is stop trying to look rich. Trying to maintain a certain image or trying to impress others is one of the fastest ways to go broke. Periodically, I'll see videos where people poke fun at themselves and talk about the irony of driving a luxury car, carrying a $2,000 purse, and wearing an expensive outfit, yet they only have $5 in their bank account. And these are supposed to be comical, but the truth is a lot of people are in these types of situations. So bottom line, don't go broke trying to look rich because you're only hurting yourself. And one of the best ways to stop trying to look rich is to recognize and reject financial peer pressure. And this can take many forms and it can be very subtle and it will usually involve someone pressuring you to spend money that you don't wanna spend or to buy items that you can't afford. So if you have to, start shopping alone because the person that pressures you isn't likely to bail you out when you're short on cash. Also, take time to review your past money goals. 
If you didn't achieve your money goals from the previous year, instead of wiping the slate clean and starting over or putting the goal on the back burner, seriously consider what went wrong and why you didn't achieve it. And this is great for self-awareness because if you can figure out what you didn't do or why things got off track, you can make adjustments and then hit that goal in the future. Also start owning your money decisions. And this kind of relates to financial peer pressure, but it goes a little further. This involves being aware of what you want, your goals, and unapologetically doing things that benefit you financially. For example, it could be continuing to be frugal, even though others might give you a hard time for this. Or it might be choosing not to co-sign or lend someone money. If you haven't already, you should also loosen the purse strings in 2023. And this might seem like backwards advice when you're trying to save money, but trust me, being less of a tightwad can be beneficial. Because oftentimes, when a person restricts their spending to the point of not enjoying anything, they burn out. And once they burn out, saving money becomes less important and they give into revenge spending. So always budget for fun and don't feel guilty about treating yourself. If you haven't already, schedule weekly or monthly money dates with your partner. Many couples don't have these, but this is a great way to get on the same page financially and be more transparent about money. You can use this time to review your budget, to tweak your spending plan, to track goals, and even talk about your concerns. In addition, simplify your finances. Personal finance isn't always easy and some people really struggle with managing their money. And with that being said, you should take advantage of anything that can make your financial life easier. This can involve automating your bills, automating your savings, switching to paperless statements, only using one credit card, and even having fewer financial goals. Also, don't let financial setbacks defeat you. Things don't always go according to plan. For example, you might set a realistic goal to save $5,000 in 12 months, but then life happens. Now, some people will use a setback as an excuse to give up or throw in the towel, but that is the worst thing you can do. These situations are sometimes unavoidable. And yes, they're also discouraging, but you have to remember that you don't lose when you get knocked down. You only lose when you don't get back up. It also helps to have separate bank accounts for spending. Some people might choose to keep their money for bills and daily spending in the same account because it's easier. But although this can work, you should also take a look at your spending pattern and consider whether you have a tendency to spend bill money on fun. If so, one thing you can do is keep separate accounts for expenses and miscellaneous spending to make sure you always have enough to cover necessities. And one thing you might consider is keeping most of your savings in an online high yield savings account, preferably one that doesn't come with an ATM card. Without a card, getting your money will require transferring funds to an offline bank first, and that can take one to two business days, which can also help slow down withdrawals. You can also do lunch and coffee plans instead of dinner. Getting together with friends and family is an excellent way to catch up. And like a lot of people, you might choose to do this over dinner, but of course that can get expensive. And sometimes you don't wanna eat in the house. So if you're trying to save money, one thing you can do is make fewer dinner plans and more coffee plans. This way you can catch up without spending too much. Another thing that can help you get to where you wanna be is to stop financial procrastination, which is basically putting off a financial obligation or goal. And a reason why some people procrastinate when it comes to their money is because they don't wanna face a situation or they might not know how to solve a problem so they do nothing. And this can take many forms. It can be ignoring credit card debt, not saving for retirement or paying bills at the last minute. But it's really a habit that you need to break because procrastination keeps a lot of people stuck in the same place. So sit down, think about where you wanna be and then put a plan into action. Also, it helps to plan no spend periods at different times throughout the year. No spend challenges are an excellent way to reset your finances and take control of your money. And there's so many different ways to do this. Some people have no spend days where they don't spend money on certain days of the week, or you might do an entire no spend month or designate certain no spend weeks or weekends. And during these periods, you basically agree to only spend money on needs and nothing else. You might also consider keeping your checking and savings account at different banks. If you have a bad habit of dipping into your savings account for items that you don't need, and you're frequently transferring money from your savings to checking to cover overspending, seriously consider keeping your savings account at a different bank 
That way you can only spend what you have in checking. Now this method, it's not completely foolproof, but if you can take away some of that safety net, you might be able to curb some of those impulse withdrawals. It also helps to check in with someone before making large purchases. And this could be anyone, such as your spouse, a sibling, a friend, it really doesn't matter. But whoever you choose, make sure that this person is financially responsible and make sure that they are capable of helping you hold yourself accountable. When you're tempted to buy something, this person can remind you of your financial goals and they can also help you reason beyond the moment. Also, stop measuring success by what you own. This is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make and it also contributes to lifestyle creep. Some people use stuff as a metric for success. So regardless of how they're doing financially, if they don't have a lot of electronics, a huge wardrobe or a nice home, they don't feel successful. So it's so important that you don't become these people. And if you struggle with this, realize that you're not your things and stuff is often just a facade. And finally, you can use the 24 hour rule with a twist. And we've talked about this rule earlier, where basically you give yourself at least 24 hours to think about a purchase, which can help stop a lot of impulse buying. But one thing you can do is also get creative. So basically after the 24 hours, if you decide not to purchase the item, take the money that you would have spent on it and transfer it to savings. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and also subscribe if you like personal finance and you wanna see more videos like this. I typically post every weekend. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days.